And once again, we have live downlink from at the candle podium. Or a support team.
Stop it, Susan, and you can proceed, and uh, Pascal was good. This is Space Lab Mission Operations Control. We are now receiving live downlink from Orbiter Columbia. This view coming from within the Space Lab module. Go ahead for the daily status check. Okay, we'll put it at once. Once again, we're re continuing to receive live downlink from the Space Lab module inside Columbia's cargo bay. And the view we're seeing here is coming from a camera that is mounted in the aft end of the Space Lab module. Uh, this camera uh, is looking forward in the module, and so we are seeing the right hand side or the starboard side of the Space Lab module. And uh, just a few of point out a few of the things that we're seeing in this view. If we look at the uh, left-hand most part of the of the view here, we see the uh, uh, look like uh, yellow two yellow boxes. And what those are is uh, that is where the Space Lab uh, VCRs are located. Those VCRs used to record all the video that comes from these cameras that we are seeing. Uh, we only get portions, uh, uh, small opportunity to opportunities to get this video downlinked and so those video recorders are used to record all the uh, video uh, that those cameras take and then uh, moving more to the just to the right we see the bubble drop and particle unit unit experiment uh, that again is one of the facilities that is uh, uh, uses the crew to load the different test chambers and uh, initiate the test runs and then the experiments or the test runs are then remotely commanded to and operated from here on the ground at Space Lab Mission Operations Control. And further to the right, almost directly in the center of your screen, in the uh, green colored rack, is what is, that is where the astronaut lung function experiment is located. Uh, again, that experiment is studying the effects of uh, weightlessness on the human uh, pulmonary system. And just uh, on the bottom left hand side of your screen you can see uh, one of the crew members uh, this particular one being payload specialist Bob Thirsk who is uh, performing activities in the torque velocity dynamometer which is located in the center aisle of the module Douglas Watt of McGill University in Montreal is the chief scientist behind the tree experiment. He has devoted his career to trying to understand how the vestibular system, or our inner ears balance and orientation center, how it functions and how specifically it adapts to a weightless environment. The idea for the torso rotation experiment first came to Dr. Watt several years ago when one of his colleagues suffered a, an injury that required the wearing of a rigid neck brace. The colleague mentioned to Dr. Watt that after a few minutes of walking around the laboratory, he began to develop symptoms of nausea. Torsal rotation is a term that we use to describe a person who rigidly fixes their head to their torso, such that when they have to turn their head to the right or to the left, they have to turn their whole torso as well. Torsal rotation is ex an example of an abnormal motor strategy in which the subject concentrates on a body frame of reference rather than the external world. And this causes us to suppress the normal way that our vestibular apparatus in our brain likes to operate. Another good example of suppressing the normal way that our brain and vestibular system likes to operate is someone who's trying to read a book inside a car that is moving down a twisty country road. While we're being bumped around all over the place, we're trying to focus on the book when really our brain and our vestibular apparatus would like to make reference to the, uh, the world that we see outside the window. And as you know, several people who try to read books inside moving cars become motion sick as well. But what is interesting to Dr. Watt is that after
astronauts tend to inadvertently develop a torso rotation motor strategy as well during the first couple of days of space flight. And we probably do this to try to minimize our symptoms of motion sickness. But in fact, we might be exacerbating the symptoms. For Dr. Watt's torso rotation experiment study on the Life and Microgravity Space Lab mission, we are going to be measuring our eye movements with special electrodes that we apply to our face. The special velocity rate center that we originally fixed to the top of our head. And also we'll be measuring our torso uh, movements as well with a special backpack accelerometer which is fixed to our back. After the flight is over, Dr. Watt is going to compare our eye movements to our head movements and our head movements to our chest movements. And he'll be looking for any evidence that we might have adopted some torso rotation motor strategy during this flight. We'll be doing this experiment once early in the mission. We've already done it. Exactly towards the middle of the flight in a couple of days. And again, towards the last uh, day or two of the space mission. If it turns out, in fact, that we have adopted torso rotation motor strategy during the flight, which might cause symptoms of motion sickness, then it will be relatively easy to train future astronauts to avoid this type of motor strategy or to pre-adapt them to uh, the atypical movement environment in a ground-based laboratory prior to flight. Well, that's what the torso rotation experiment is all about. If you see us in downlink video over the next few days wearing strange-looking apparatus on our, on our head or on our chest, you'll know that we'll be just checking out to see whether or not we are trying to unconsciously suppress the normal way that our vestibular apparatus likes to operate. Well, that's it today from the Space Shuttle Columbia. Tune in tomorrow to learn about one of the other exciting LMS investigations. Goodbye. Now in view uh, from Columbia, the outer banks of uh, the Carolinas, Columbia moving out above the Atlantic Ocean.